Hi, Eileen Bayer, the fam here. Welcome to another Halloween special edition. And in this one, we are going to be covering clinical lycanthropy, which is a, um, where a person thinks they're a werewolf. Um, before we begin, remember to watch the full video because in this video, there will be three key words. When I get to the keyword, I will say keyword, what the keyword is, and then continue. At the end of the video, in the comment section, put down what the three keywords are that you heard in the video, along with a genuine comment about the video, to be eligible for my free merch giveaway when I reach 2,000 subscribers. So let's get started. Started with this spooky edition. What is clinical lycanthropy? Well, clinical lycanthropy is a rare psychotic syndrome with a keyword delusional belief that one is a werewolf. They grunt, they claw, and they feel their body is covered with hair and their nails are elongated. Some people strongly believe that they are in the process of metamorphosis into a wolf. Now, there has been 13 case reports of such people since 1850. That's not very much. One psychiatrist has found since 1850 there has been 56 original case descriptions of people who believed they were, keyword, metamorphosing, into an animal. People who believed they were metamorphosing into an animal, among them were 13 reports met, among them 13 of the reports met the criteria for clinical lycanthropy, the medical term for having delusions of being able to turn into a wolf. The adjective Clinical is used to emphasize that the condition doesn't mean actual lycanthropy or the ability to metamorphose physically into a wolf because we all know if you're born a human, you're going to stay a human. If you're born a wolf, you'll stay a wolf. You're not going to turn into a human and vice versa. Okay, such a low number of clinical lycanthropy. Lycanthropy cases reported in over 150 years suggest that the condition may be even rarer than previously thought. In clinical practice, many cases are missed because mental health professionals are insufficiently aware of the existence and the uniqueness of this disorder. So, how and why does a brain see itself as a wolf? Well, although for millennia, explanations for lycanthropy were metaphysical. Eventually, modern science raised the idea that brain disease caused the condition. Over the past decade, various brain imaging studies have pointed to specific brain areas that appear to be essential for creating the sense of physical existence in perceiving our body schema. These brain regions include areas of the brain's cortex, or the outer layer, that is responsible for movement and sensation. It is possible that in some patients, these delusions originated from problems in related brain regions. Which, pro which profoundly change the individual sense of physical identity. Still, because clinical lycanthropy tends to occur along with other major psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, keyword psychotic depression, or bipolar disorder, the best practice would be to treat the underlining disorder. Um, because it is so rare, there is no real treatment. And as I just stated, most people that um, they found that 
have this disorder have either schizophrenia or psychotic depression or bipolar. So that's why they say the best thing to do is to treat the underlying disorder because when you treat them, then this disorder would go away. Now, it doesn't mean at the same time that anybody that has any of the three that I just mentioned are going to have this disorder. As it stated, this is a true mental illness, but like most of these rare ones that I've been bringing up for Halloween, they go along with other regular mental illnesses. And with, so when you treat them, they do go away, but it doesn't mean that everyone that has this mental illness is going to get it. These are rare, real mental illnesses that I just thought it would be cool to bring up because they remind us of Halloween. Um, we covered va um, vampirism. We've covered um, walking corpse syndrome, which is like a zombie. When you know you see walking corpse, what do you think of? You think of a zombie. Vampires and Dracula. You know, these are things that make us think of Halloween and now a werewolf. These things, like I said, triggered memories of Halloween. So with this being the Halloween month, I thought it would be kind of neat to do these instead of our regular series. Um, when November hits, we will be going back to our regular series and covering regular mental illnesses how to cope with them, and um, basically educating them. The ones that I'm covering for this month, I very much doubt you're ever going to cross, come across anybody with any of these. These are just very rare cases, but I thought it was kind of neat. So until we see each other again, remember... Always see with your heart and not your eyes, because what your eyes see truly isn't important, because what matters is invisible to the eye, and only the heart can see that. So when you see with your heart, you see what is very, very important, which is what makes that person. Because judging somebody by what you see is like a nut. You... The shell of a nut could look good, but you don't know if that nut's rotten or not until you crack that shell open to get into the meat. The nut is considered the meat, okay? And you can't see that until you crack the shell open. Well, people are the same way. This is our shell. What's in here is the meat. You can't see if what in here is good if you look with your eyes, because all you're going to see is the shell. But if you look with your heart, you can see the me. You can see that person. And, you know, just remember, everything that you say has consequences, good or bad. You, say, you could say something that you think is funny, but it may not be funny to another person. And that could be the straw that breaks the camel back. It could mean them losing their life. Because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know the type, what they're suffering from and what their day was like. But on the other hand, you could be encouraging to somebody, lift them up, inspire them. You don't have to go out of your way. Just be nice. Let them know they're important as a human being. And that they matter. Just simple things like that could be somebody saving grace. And you could save them from wanting to end their life. That's all people want to hear. You know, anybody with a mental illness or a physical disability wants the same things that everybody else does. They want to be loved, understood, and respect it, just like you and I do. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So it's so much easier just to be nice to somebody. You know, my dad used to have a saying, and I think it's very appropriate. If you can't say anything nice to somebody, then just don't speak. Because what comes out of your mouth is like a two-edged, our words are like the two-edged sword. They can kill or they can save. Which do you want? You kill somebody by your words, you're responsible for that person losing their life because of your words or their actions, whatever they do. If you're nice to somebody, you can change that. Now, I'm not saying to be nice to, like, the people we consider trolls on here. Most of them, if you study um, trolls on the Internet, you'll find that, yes, they have problems. They have a mental problem. And sometimes the best thing to do is to ignore them. A lot of, because they're looking for reactions. You could talk nice to them, but they're going to keep coming back. Because you gave them some sort of reaction. And they'll keep working on you until they get the reaction they want because of what their mental disorder is. Don't, you know, just make your statements to them as simple and plain as possible. Tell them, look, they matter as an individual, but you can't communicate with them if they're going to behave like that. And make it that short and sweet. You don't need to carry on in a conversation for an hour. Because then you're just, you're giving them what they want. It may not be totally what they want. But it's still what they want. Think of trolls like kids trying to get their way. They're going to pull a tantrum tantrum. When you say no to something. Or when they're not getting enough attention. If you, even if you talk nice to somebody in a tantrum tantrum, they're not always going to listen. So remember out there, you, yes, you out there, each and every one of you are important. You all matter. Everyone matters. And why? Because you're important to me for who you are. I love each and every one of you for who you are. And don't let anybody change you because you were made the way you were made. If any changes, change your inner self to be a better person. So until I see you again, I love you all.